Okay, so the question I want to the question I want to talk to you guys about today is this, man. It, it's um, how can a young man, how can a young woman make their life pure? How can they make their life blameless, or how can they live righteously? Before I go into it, I want to make sure I separate uh, 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 two points of reference. Right, the first thing is, as Christians, we have a positional righteousness that we have in Christ Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. That righteousness doesn't depend on us. We can do nothing to attain it. That comes through faith and faith alone in the finished work of Jesus Christ. What I'm talking about is how can we grow in personal and practical righteousness, holiness? In other words, man, how can we live better lives, right? How can we be better people? You know, so let me give you an example. You take a young man who grew up on the wrong side of the track. You take a young man that grew up in the city. He grew up in the wrong environment. He grew up with drug dealers. She grew up around prostitutes, uh, uh, thieves, and and liars. And you know, now now all of a sudden, this person is 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 a Christian. This person has received Christ, but all they know in life is what they've seen and the things that they've experienced. And God is now saying, "Well, hey, I need you to live." A certain way now that you've passed from death into life what's the secret to personal and practical righteousness holiness well that's what we're going to be talking about today on Mel's block so listen let's jump right into it I know for me personally you know I grew up um, hard I grew up uh, 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 experiencing certain things and seeing certain things and I personally believe that the things that I experienced as a young man affected me into adulthood and so you know I want to know what does the Bible say about this because God if we're being honest is asking a lot from us once we become Christians anybody that tells you this is a cakewalk is misleading you they're not telling you the truth and so I want to know what's the secret to personal and practical righteousness or holiness and what's the scripture have to say about it well it's a great question because the psalmist actually asked that same question in Psalms chapter 119. In verse 1, the very first thing that he said is, how can a young man make his way pure? How can he make his way righteous or blameless? And in that same verse, he gave us the answer. Let me show you real quick. The answer he gave us is, by keeping it according to your word. Whose word? God's word. So to the psalmist, what he's saying is, how can a young man, now that he's coming to Christ, or a young woman, now that he's saved, how can he live a righteous, pure, blameless life? He says the answer is, by keeping it according to the word of God. But check this out. The Bible, to me, right, and to a lot of other people, has the answer to every, every single question you can ever ask. It's the only book that when it gives an answer, it gives an answer with authority in a sense that you need to, not just can, but you need to believe what it's saying. That's how authoritative it is. And it's that way on each and every subject. But there's some people out there, young people, old people, who do not believe that the Bible is still relevant in 2022. Right? There's some Christians who don't believe that every part of the Bible is relevant in 2022. So they pick and choose which parts they're going to believe, which parts they're going to walk out. Right, But let me tell you something. When I read the scripture, I look at David. I look at Paul. To them, the scriptures, which would have been the Old Testament text, right, was very relevant to them and how they lived their lives. Jesus, who's our example, also followed the Old Testament scriptures. That was his Bible, and it was still very relevant to him. So, this is what we're going to do. What was the psalmist really, really saying when he asked the question, how can a young man keep his way pure? What was, what was the real question that he was asking? Well, what he was asking in layman terms in 2022 is, how can a normal person trying to be a good Christian walk in a world that's corrupted, in a world that's uh, depraved, in a world that's filled with sin, in environments that aren't conducive to growth, how can this normal person in an unnormal world 
reach righteousness. How can that happen? Well, we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to give you a couple different ways that you can attain righteousness according to the word of God. But before I do that, I want to show you what the problem is. I want to show you what the problem is that we all have according to scripture, which stops us from being able to reach that level of righteousness that the psalmist is talking about here. The first place I'm going to take you is to Psalms 51. Let me see if I can pull up Psalms 51 for us real quick. Psalms 51. Let's see. And we're going to take a look at verse 10 in Psalms 51, right? So that, that says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a clean heart. So one of the first problems that we need to address, one of the first problems that we need to acknowledge is that we have a dirty heart. We have a dirty heart that separates us from God. We have a dirty heart that craves things other than what God craves, that desires things that go against the will of God. And so we have a big problem with our heart. And so here's the argument, though. That's one verse. You can't build the doctrine off of one verse, Jamel. But hold on. There's more. Let me take you to the book. Let's see. Let's take you to the book of Jeremiah. If I can pull that up here. And we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 17. And we're going to look at verse 9. In this verse it says, The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? This was the mindset of the prophets of old. They understood that our heart was sick. Our heart was dirty and it needed to be cleansed. And so when God's calling us to walk in righteousness, he's calling us to walk in blamelessness. There's something in us that makes us unable to be able to do that. And that's our heart, our heart being separated from God, our heart being dirty. Our heart needs to be fixed. Let me show you another verse. And I'm going to show you this verse in the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. And we're going to look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says this. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Touch nothing unclean. Go out of the midst of her. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of God. See, we must be pure before God can use us. Before God can use us, we have to be pure. Before we can walk and, you know... Uh, uh, experientially, you know, uh, in, in our experiences, we have to be pure. So that means we have to have a cleanse heart. We have to, we have to be uh, uh, made holy. Now that happens positionally when we accept Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So if you haven't made that choice yet, listen, take a minute, take a minute, and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Repent and ask Jesus Christ to come and live in your heart. And let me tell you something, when that happens, he cleanses your heart. He takes that which was dirty and makes it clean. He takes that which was a rock and makes it flesh. And he makes you a vessel that's able to do righteousness experientially, to walk this out. See, the problem starts in our heart. So if that's the case, how can my heart and life be kept pure now that I'm a Christian, right? Now that I'm a Christian, I've solved the my heart being dirty. I've solved the problem of me going after uh, uh, things that I shouldn't be going after by receiving Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, right? Now, what happens next? Well, again, if we go back to Psalms 119 verse 9, the psalmist, let's see here, Psalms 119 verse 9, he gave us the answer. He says, by keeping it according to your word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three. I'm going to give you three, three quick, quick tips on how to do this. And the first one, I'm going to start in the book of Haggai. Let me go on and pull that up here for you. Follow me. Three quick tips and then we're done here. Let me pull up Haggai for you. And let's see here. And we're going to go to chapter 1, verse 7. Very short verse. And it says this. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. This is the first thing, the first step that you need to do 
in order to walk in righteousness. You need to consider your ways. Take a step back. Take a step back. Take a deep breath. Carefully examine your life. Carefully examine what you're doing and ask yourself, does this line up with the Bible? Does this line up with the word? Consider your ways. See, this is not a, you know, it just pops in my head one second and I let it go because I get caught up in other things. God told Joshua to meditate on the word of God. So when you're considering your ways, you really need to sit and meditate. Think about what you're doing. Think about how you're living. And then you need to open up the text and see if your life matches what that book is saying. Here's the second thing. The second thing is take control over yourself. Take control over yourself. See, it's easy to just drift. It's easy to go through life and just rest in your sin. It's easy to follow uh, uh, culture. It's easy to follow uh, uh, your peers, co-workers. It's easy to follow family and just get lost in the sauce and kind of go through the motions. It's easy to do that. But scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, and I want you to see this, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse, verse uh, chapter 12, verse 1, the word of God says this. It says, let's pull it up. Therefore, since you have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding you, listen, here it is. Let us also lay aside every encumbrance or every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. See, you need to take control of your life. You need to take control of your actions. Let's say it this way. You need to take responsibility for what you're doing. And as the writer of Hebrews says, lay aside every obstacle that causes you to sin. Take responsibility for your actions. If the word says, do not steal, stop stealing. Find yourself in a place of obedience. If the word says, do not fornicate. Listen, you might got to move out of the apartment that you're living in because you shouldn't be living with her. You shouldn't be living with him unless you're married. That takes us to the third point. And my last point is apply the word of God. See, simply put, make the Bible, apply the Bible to every part of your life, to every part of your conduct. It's the only way for you to be spiritually clean. So when the Bible speaks to you, you walk in obedience. Jesus said it this way. If you love me, you will obey me. See, practical personal holiness is very simple. One, you find it in the word of God by walking according to scripture, by being obedient to scripture. Two, by checking yourself every day. Every day I wake up, every night I go to bed, I got to check myself and I ask myself, I examine myself, did I walk according to what the word said today? And if I did or I didn't, because I know I failed in some area, I ask God to forgive me, I confess my sins, but then I also thank him for giving me the strength to be successful in certain areas, right? How can a young man, a young woman keep themselves pure? Practical righteous, practical holiness. Read the Bible every day and do what this book says. It's not easy, but I will tell you this. Ask God every day for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the word says he'll give it to you. And then by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to walk out what this says. That is how a young man keeps his way pure. I hope this word was a blessing to somebody. My name is Jamel. This is Mel's Block. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor. Look around. Take a look at some of the other videos that are up. If you find something that you like, hit that like button. If you really like it, subscribe to the channel. New videos every week. Y'all be blessed until next time.